Good day, everyone. My name is Jonas Envall, uh, and I come from, uh, from Carmenta. We'll see if we can get my slides up here. Yeah, great. Today, I will talk uh, to you about uh, display and analysis of geospatial information. And in particular, I'm going to talk about two use cases that, get, that I'm going to go into more depth of. And it's autonomous b flight and camera paths. See if this works. Ah, let's do it like this instead. So, what is required to successfully plan and manage a US mission? Well, above all, you need to have an up to date operational picture. And this is achieved by combining and visualizing geospatial information in real time and different types of geospatial information as well sensor data and dynamic events. It can be things like tactical overlay, uh, airspace information, or really dynamic things uh, like uh, radar system, feeds from radar systems, or video feeds from drones. This is an example of when we do this. Uh, as you can see, there we have a 3D map here. And this 3D map is built up of different data sources. In the back, you see a low-res orthophoto draped on a height model. Closer to the camera, you can see boxes of buildings that we built up using building footprints together with height information for the buildings. And closest to the camera, you see a really high-res uh, city model with two centimeter accuracy that we have got from our friends at AGI. And we use this model with all these types of information to do different types of analysis. You can see the drone route going through the city, avoiding the buildings and trees, and going through the, these narrow streets. And you can also see the blue parts on the red and on the top of the roof of the church. That is the view shed. If you can see, the, there is a, the drone symbol, uh, or the model of the drone in, in that picture. And what, you can, what that actually can see at this moment is pictured. You can see the small shades on top of the church that is the, the stall spikes that gives uh, part of this is not visible. And in the bottom, you can see a, a, a height model, a vertical profile that describes what altitude the drone is flying at on the different uh, levels. And this is an example that shows how analysis functionality can help the user to get an understanding of what is going on in this situation and get the full situation awareness. Now I will show you three examples of other analyses that can help in the drone use case. Uh, the first example is airspace coverage. Here you can see that we have uh, two observers that are indicated by small eye symbols in the map. You see one in the middle and one down on the right side. You also see a white volume in this picture, that is the analysis volume. And also you see these red parts. Those are parts that are not seen by either of these two observers. And using this type of analysis can help the operator place these sensors optimally to avoid any blind spots or, and get an optimal uh, coverage of this. But understanding airspace coverage can sometimes be difficult. And therefore, we can do it in real time. So here, as we move the different observers, you can see in real time exactly how the airspace coverage is changed. And you can have this as a help to place them optimally. And of course, you can do the other way around also. You can see what does this observer actually see uh, to have a volum volumetric line of sight. The next example I'm going to show is how we can show a video stream from a drone projected on top of a 3D map. And here you can see in green uh, the trajectory, the, the, the flight path of the drone. You can see the drone as a model on top. You can see the, uh, the view cone of the camera going towards the ground. And finally, you can see on the ground the video that is projected. And of course, we can also do this in real time. So here you can see a, a live video stream from a drone that is following a car that is projected uh, in real time on the map. And by doing this, you highly increase the usability of the video, since everything that's happening is georeferenced immediately, and you know exactly where the car is located at all times. 
And the third example I'm going to show is vertical clearance along a route. The red areas here in the upper picture shows where the vertical clearance is below a certain threshold. And in this way, potential hazards and obstacles can be identified and analyzed. As, uh, and you can easily uh, change the route so that it actually con goes in a safe area and doesn't intersect any of the red areas. Next, I'm going to go into one of the two use cases that I'm going to look at more depth. So the first is camera path for a drone mission. And what do we mean by a camera path then? Well, a camera path describes the specific sequence of camera movements as it is used to capture footage. It is the path that the camera takes in space, including its position, its orientation, and its speed as it records the subject. And traditionally, the user either operates the UAV manually or starts by setting out a number of waypoints, defining up the route. And then, after this, he manually adjusts the camera parameters to uh, capture what he wants. And he doesn't really get any good feedback on exactly what is, is captured. Uh, there are also, of course, systems that, that do uh, orthophotos or photogrammetry to get 3D models that do have patterns that are pre-generated to actually capture photo. And here you define a polygon, and then uh, the system calculates a, a standard route to cover this. But it goes through the, this route with typically the same distance, same altitude, etc. By using a 3D model, we can improve these, pre these previous approaches. Here we are low mission planning, considering not only the path that the drone takes, but also the considering the projected line of sight and camera visualization. Here you can see how the user can adjust uh, the camera and get the direct feedback on the line of sight and also on the little simulated camera view to get a really good understanding exactly what can be seen and how that will look in the final footage that you will get later. And even though this search pattern thing exists, of course, in many systems today, you can get a better uh, planning tool by allowing to use the vertical, pro vertical uh, component of this and in a 3D model. And you can enhance the, the, flight, the flight park accuracy, especially along the z-axis. You can also uh, use this to inspect 3D volumes. Uh, here in this slide, we, we scan a 3D structure to provide a full visual assessment of a building. A 360 image can be captured dynamically here by computing the camera path around this building based on the 3D model and information about the structure. So you can fly exactly at this distance, the same distance around it. And also, of course, you fly this in the different height interval using this a pattern that is then dynamically created. So when talking about planning for mission objectives, emphasis is shifted from the traditional focus on the drone flight path to the actual objectives of the mission. We, instead of starting to think about the flight path and then thinking about what the camera sees, we, we instead turn it around and we start thinking about what we can see. And then the actual flight path is a derivative of that. And this user-centric approach allows for a more dynamic and flexible mission planning system, ensuring that the drone activities is closely aligned with the goals of the mission. Next, let me go into the second use case that I will look into more in depth. And this is calculating the best route for a UAV mission. We'll be looking both in the rural and in the urban example in this case. But in both cases, of course, we want to calculate the best route for our own mission. What, what does the best route mean then? Is it the safest, the shortest, the quickest, the most efficient? And in that case, is it fuel consumption we talk about? Or is it the most hidden? In the one that is in range of the instructor or the radar station? Or is it outside a certain zone? Well, in most cases, it will be a combination of multiple optimization goals depending on the operational needs. And in our example, we're going to focus on two, two uh, optimization goals, speed and safety. 
And balancing speed and safety is one example of a multi-object optimization which is complicated. Even if each of these objectives can be optimized on to min be minimized or maximized, there must be a definite way to compare numbers of different kinds. Uh, and in this, thing, this example, it's difficult. Think of the objectives as different currencies that has no official uh, exchange rate. Travel time is an objective that's easy uh, to, to rate, but uh, safety is not. Optimally, we want to be talking about uh, the, the, the prob probability of success of the mission, but uh, that is really hard to optimize on. Travel time, though, is, uh, is something that is easier uh, to, to optimize on. And we solve this by assigning a, a safety factor to each of the zones that we'll pass through uh, that will be as an exchange rate between these currencies. And by doing that, we can optimize on a single objective instead of two. Let us now look at an example of the Nap of Earth route uh, that we have generated here. Here, uh, the route goes from the, the waypoint on the left, it goes up to the waypoint on the top, and then continues uh, using this ridge, which is the shortest route between them, and then goes back to the waypoint on the right. Uh, this is, of course, this is the fastest route if you want to do this Nap of Earth type flying between these waypoints, but, uh, and it's, it's fast, but it's not so safe, because in this case, uh, you're quite visible. So let us introduce another concept to take care of this. And this is the visibility index concept. And the visibility index for a position, in this, ca this case the eye, is a, a percentage number of how much is visible of the terrain surrounding uh, the point. So in this case, we from the eye, we can see 63.4% of the surrounding circle. We can also view here within this observation area, we can view as a, as a color map the different uh, in indices that we do have for the different points. So you can see here, if you move out a bit to, towards the sea in this example, you will see more of the surrounding area. And if you move in inland, then you will see less. And since a position with a low visibility index uh, can see very little of the surroundings, it's also hidden because visibility goes both ways. So we can use this to calculate where it's good to be placed if you don't want to be seen. And applying this to the same example, we here have areas that have a low visibility index colored in green in the picture. And uh, uh, the route then will be adjusted to follow these instead. And if you instead know that what from what direction the, the route, the, the danger will come, you can adjust uh, these uh, calculations to make sure that in this case we have a route that is concealed from our server on, that is on the northeast. We can similarly make this work in an urban environment. And here you, we do the same calculation, avoiding uh, surface and buildings and optimizing a route that goes through the city. But let's add some more constraints to this. Typically, you want to add constraints that come from the UTM and also for, from other uh, mission factors. And typically, you have a situation like this, of course, quite simplified. You have a site airspace surrounding it. You have restricted volumes where you can't fly. And you have emergency landing zones that you want to be able to reach within the flight. And then you have a, your calculated flight here in blue. And part of it is the deconfliction with restricted volumes, both totally restricted, as in this example, where we do generate the route in, in blue here to avoid that. But it could also be areas that are uh, just not desired to fly on, where we'll have a, this safety factor that adds a, a speed limit on such things and make it uh, not preferable for the route to go through those. Another key confliction that is very important is the deflection between different routes in the four-dimensional plane. And this video shows two of the routes that has been conflicted from each other. And as multiple autonomous systems operate in the same airspace, of course, the potential for in-flight in collision is, is higher. The risk for that is higher. And the airspace congestion increases. And then this is very, an important concept. 
So this is something we also work with. Uh, finally, I want to tell you about the project that we're, that we're part of the, and running currently uh, that implements most of these concepts. It's a project funded by Innovate UK that is part of the Future Flight Challenge program in England. It's called HEDO, and we are part of a consortium of companies including Airport Here, Heathrow Airport, OSL, Thales, and Heretic 8. So, uh, and the aim of this project is that we're going to do live autonomous BVLOS flights on, in the last four months of this project, which is going to be next spring slash summer. And the second aim of the project is to give recommendations to the, 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 the legislation authorities to how we can go forward with legislation that supports this in a good way. Thank you so much for listening. Now I wonder if there are any questions.